So this is what our new topology looks like. We've got a Cisco router, an HP MSR, two 5800 A-series switches, and two Procurve switches, or E-series switches. I've moved the PCs to the Procurve switches. So PC2 is connected to port 2 on edge 1. PC3 is connected to port 2 on edge 2. The only configuration that I've done on the Procurve switches is change their names to match the diagram and configure an IP address on VLAN 1. No other configuration has been done on the Procurve switches. Now let's use LLDP to double check our topology. So I'm going to telnet to the core A-series switch. In other words, core 1. And I'm going to do the command display LLDP neighbor information. As you can see here on port gigabit 102, we have a connection to a pro curve switch on port 1, which is correct. The IP address of the Procurve switch is 10.1.1.103. We also have a connection on port 1012 to a Procurve switch with the name Edge 2 and that's connected to port 11 which is correct as per the diagram. We also have our two 10 gig interfaces, 27 connected to core 2 on port 27 as well as port 28 connected to core 2 on port 28. So the cabling on core 1 looks correct. Let's look at core 2. So I'll telnet to 10.1.1.102 display LLDP neighbor information once again on gigabit 102 we have a connection to edge 2, which is a pro curve switch on port 1. I'm only using colors red and blue here to differentiate the cables in the diagram. Apart from that, they have no meaning. The IP address of the switch is 10.11.104. Going a bit further, gigabit port 1012 is connected to port 11 on edge 1, which is a pro curve switch, IP address 10.11.103. We once again have our 10 gigabit interfaces 27 connected to core 1 on 27, as well as port 28 connected to port 28 on core 1. So the cabling looks good. Let's see if we can telnet to edge 1 and edge 2. So can I ping 10.1.1.103? At the moment you'll notice that I'm not able to ping the switch. And this is the same reason as previously. The switch needs a default gateway. So I'm going to telnet to 10.0.0.100, which is the MSR. Can the MSR ping the HP switch? As you see it can. And it can also ping edge 2. So Telnet 10.1.1.103. You can see that we connected to an HP E-Series switch. Hostname is Edge1. Show Run. As you can see, there's a very basic configuration on the switch. It has a hostname and an IP address configured on VLAN 1. All ports are still untagged for VLAN 1. So in this case, Let's set the IP default gateway to the router. Now I'm able to do that because the router or MSR is on VLAN 1 with IP address 10.1.1.100 and the management interface of Edge 1 and Edge 2 is also in VLAN 1. So the two switches are logically directly connected at layer 3 to the MSR. So let's log out. I'll log out and I'll save the configuration. Telnetting to edge 2. Show run. You can see that the switch has a very basic configuration. 
Hostname is Edge2. All ports are untagged in VLAN 1. IP address is 10.1.1.104. So conf key, IP default gateway, 10.1.1.100. Log out. Save the configuration. So now, from my PC, can I ping the first pro curve switch? And as you can see, I'm able to do that. What about the second switch? I'm able to ping that switch as well. So I now have connectivity from my PC 10.0.0.249 to both pro curve switches. To complete the configuration of this network, we need to configure the uplinks between the access switches and core switches as trunks or tagged interfaces. The PCs also need to be put into their relevant VLANs. So port 2 on edge 1 needs to be untagged for VLAN 2 and port 2 on edge 2 needs to be untagged for VLAN 3. So let's configure the pro curve switches first and then we'll complete the configuration on the A-series switches. So, Telnet 10.1.1.103 On edge 1, show interface brief. As you can see, port 1, port 2 and port 11 are up. So we need to create VLAN 2. Untag port 2. We need to tag port 1 and tag port 11 the uplinks to the core switches. We need to do something similar on edge 2. So Telnet 10.1.1.104 Create VLAN 3 Untag port 2 Tag port 1 Tag port 11 Show run On edge 1, we've created VLAN 2, port 2 is untagged for VLAN 2, and we've tagged the uplinks. On switch 2, we've created VLAN 3, untagged port 2, and tagged the uplinks. So I'll save the configuration on our switches. And that's all the configuration that's required on the access switches or edge switches. Let's complete the configuration on the core switches. So firstly, core one. Interface gigabit one slash zero slash two. Port link type trunk port trunk permit vlan 1 and 2 display this so that's the configuration that's required on port 2 we're going to do something similar on port 12 set the port link type to trunk Permit VLAN 1 and 3 in this case, because this link is going to edge 2. Display this. So that's the configuration of core 1. I'll save that configuration. And now let's configure core 2. So Telnet 10.1.1.102, switch 2 or core 2, system view, interface gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 2, port link type trunk, port trunk permit VLAN 1 and in this case 3, display this. So that's the configuration of port 102. 
Let's go into port 12. We're going to set the port link type to trunk. And in this case, we are going to permit VLAN 1 and 2. Display this. So that looks right. Let's save the configuration. So hopefully now we've completed the configuration of this network. Let's see if we can ping our PCs, PC2 and PC3. So on my local PC, 10.0.0.2.4.9, can I ping 10.1.2.5? As you can see, the ping succeeds. Can I ping 10.1.3.5? As you can see, the ping succeeds. Now to prove that this works, I'm going to shut down the untagged ports on the Procurve switches. So I'll set up a continuous ping to 10.1.2.5 and on edge 1 I'm going to go on to interface 2 disable. Notice the ping times out. If I enable the port hopefully the ping should work and there you go. Let's do something similar on edge 2. So I'll set up a continuous ping to 10.1.3.5. On edge 2, go on to interface 2, disable the port. Ping starts to time out. I'll enable the port. Ping starts to succeed. So, we've successfully configured this infrastructure with VLANs, inter VLAN routing, and RIP. We have full connectivity in our network. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to optimize Spanning Tree.